for many years, or I lived there for many years, and uh, for the last five, six years we have tried to study and cultivate this specific Bengali style of cooking. We have been cooperating with them. Our guru goes there, what is uh, teaching like the traditional method, method of cooking. And uh, let me say that, that there are three main schools of kitchen schools in India, North, South, and then Bengali. You can do other kind of classifications also, but it's one way to do it. So they have many things in common, but at the same time, they are also very much different. So in, in Bengali, um, there is, um, the one thing is that the soft cheese or the vegetable preparations are the main thing there. there are also vegetables growing in Jaina and uh, they are using them a lot. So, uh, and there is like a great variety of these vegetable disease subjects. Mm -hmm. I didn't count, but uh, like minimum 15 to 20 kind of main categories. Uh, and of course, every category has like a hundreds and uh, basically unlimited variations how to, how to uh, put different pieces. So, I'm not quite sure about English, but at least in Finnish language, I think we have like a four, maximum five different words for this is done from vegetables. So maybe English may have some more, but uh, many of the Bengali preparations you don't have like an exact uh, word for it in Western language. So, some of them come according to the vegetables used, uh, some are coming according to particular flavor of what they are uh, supposed to be, like uh, for example, sock. Sock means this kind of uh, green leaf vegetables, like uh, spinach or things like that. So, and in Finland, we only have basically, well, I don't know, maybe three. There is this uh, needle, if you know, yeah, it's kind of uh, how are you metal, 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 metal. Yes. metal. Yeah. the stinging metal. Yeah, if you touch it, you burn. That, that yeah. is one what is in Finland, and then we have spinach and maybe one more, but that. Yeah. Any more, but actually in the previous times, we had several. Even even during the World War Two, they published the government published a book, by uh, written by Professor Toivar Altavara, uh, very famous book, and he introduced uh, about two three hundred plants that you can eat, including birch leaves, um, dandelion, voikukka, and many others. So, but. It's just in modern vegetable market, there are much less. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of, a lot of vegetables, but like a strictly in a category of this art, it's like a. Yeah. At least, yeah, we have the more well known house uh, yeah. than this one and a uh, few others. But, but in Bengali, for example, these ones, there are at least 20 well known really oh, yeah, yeah. vegetables, and they are all called sock. Uh, but, yeah. but then there are so many like variations how to prepare them and uh, you can add other vegetables or you can add coconut and so on. But for, for example, this particular preparation, there, there is no really like a finish thing for it. Mm -hmm. But uh, even as uh, like a normal, regular daily lunch in Bengali villages, you can easily have like a three, four soft cheese. Previously and still nowadays, it's often a common thing that like uh, ladies of different families they go together to cook. So there are three, four, or five cooks. So then it's very easy to make preparations. So even as a regular day, sometimes there can be eight or ten preparations. And uh, like uh, if there is some special festival, it's. Uh, or some holidays come on that uh, 15 to 20 preparations. And especially some cheese, it's like a, it can be 6, 7, 8, something like that. 
uh, and it is really something special. That, that is, uh, like in some temples, they, they, they even in some of the temples they do an even daily basis or weekly basis. This is called uh, Raj Pota or uh, no, no, Chaban Pota, it means uh, 64 preparations. And uh, so sometimes there are like 108 preparations. So it, it can be, especially the waste for preparation, there can be like 30 or 35 or something. Of course, you have to be quite expert to eat very little, <laughs> otherwise you are finished quite full. Like uh, even we uh, sometimes do like uh, 20 preparations. So if you usually, if people are too eager to eat a lot, so after three preparations, they have already taken so much that they <laughs> it's harder to. Go on because it's the part of the serving also that you usually only put like one or two preparations at the time and you finish them and then you put more. Yeah, this is one thing. And well, concerning spicing, it's uh, in Bengali the idea is to kind of enhance the natural flavor of the vegetables, not to. Uh, or, or yeah, yeah, not, not to like over spice it, that uh, you, you can get more taste of natural flavor, I think. Yeah, especially South India, they do very spicy. Like um, some years ago, one group of South India in Helsinki, they were asking us to do kind of gathering for their parties. And then from the beginning, they were asking, oh, is it really spicy? Uh, or would you do some? Some more spicy because usually you are doing so much. Uh, yeah, yeah, it will be spicy. And uh, are you sure that uh, we were discussing many times? Uh, is it really spicy? That uh, please make it spicy. Yeah, yeah, it will be. Uh, so I was doing, I think, 10 or 15 liters sapsi, and regularly I would put maximum 10 fresh chilies. So I put uh, 50 fresh chilies and then <laughs> maybe half deciliter is red chili powder. So it was not like anything, but still uh, later on when I was asking their comments, well, it, it had some spices, but not really hot. <laughs> 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 yeah. But uh, but but Bengali is a little different. It's usually a little milder. Of course, there are some particular preparations which are supposed to be hot, but usually it's like a milder. They use a lot of spices, but uh, it's more like a milder. Excuse me, where is actually Bengali? Which part of India it is? It's kind of uh, east or northeast. Uh -huh. Like uh, it's, uh, the place is near to Bangladesh. And, uh, the pre previously, the Orissa was also counted, counted to Bengal. But no, nowadays, it's uh, there are like places like Calcutta and that, that area, it's called West Bengal. East mm -hmm. Bengal is nowadays in its own, own country, Bangladesh. Oh, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But, but the culture is, culture is yeah. Yeah, more, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not, it's not tropical. <laughs> it's subtropical climate. Yeah, so I, I would say like that. Yeah. Yeah. So no coconut growing. You know, there is coconut here, here ah, but, there is, but, yeah. uh, but it's like a little different than here, it's not like a rainforest. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a little more like that. Try to stick to it. 
but if you are voting Bengali, do Bengali, if you do North Indian, then do North Indian, if you do Italian, do Italian, but, uh, but if you are just randomly mixing things, it's a little bit like a funny. But like in India also nowadays, it's uh, for lunch, sometimes you get uh, four sub cheese and then it's, they then go and put pasta next time. It's a little, a little funny like that. Yeah. Because like in Italian cooking, the spicing is very much different. So it's, it's kind of a different thing. So it's, it, Italian is very nice uh, cuisine, but uh, if you do Italian, then it sticks to it. From, from it to it. <laughs> to India and so on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it's also both part of Ayurveda and both part of yeah, Ayurveda means the yeah, yeah, science and medicine and also part of Bengali cooking that uh, you should use your local ingredients. So it doesn't mean that you have, have to always buy from uh, some Oriental or Indian market to cook Bengali. You can always adjust and do from the local local things, and that's even recommended. So, of course, for the beginning, it's, it's uh, best to follow certain recipes and so on. But at least when you get the like the basics together, we can always adjust and uh, modify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Today we are not going to talk about so more. Maybe you then it should be here. And, um, then there are different savories like uh, today we are doing this um, alu parata. So. No, no, sorry, uh, not alu parata, but um, pesan roti. It's a, a pesan is this chickpea. <coughs> so we are doing one bread with this uh, half uh, wheat and half uh, chickpea flour and some spices. <coughs> Or black fat and spawn. Yeah, it is basically very similar but uh, it's get the uh, it's called for mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. One uh, difference may be that paradas will usually fry in tea or oil, mm -hmm. but this is usually kind of dry roasted mm -hmm. or fried mm -hmm. and, yeah. And uh, then we do one chutney. Chutney means kind of you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, there, there are both uh, salt and, uh, and uh, sweet uh, chutneys in India. Uh, well, at least in South India, I think the salty chutneys are more common like a coconut chutney or a peanut chutney. So we are doing uh, basic uh, apple chutney. Okay. It's a uh, well, it's often like a jam-like, but um, personally I'm not so fond of uh, or it is doing like a really like a how to say cooking. It's so long that it becomes a jam, but uh, usually I like that the rest, not vegetables, but the fruits are like more like a yeah. yeah. Well, it's kind of questionable. And uh, then we do one or probably two sweets, since uh, our respective uh, photographer is a uh, vegan and he's a vegan, so we do, we do halva, but there's uh, butter is uh, needed, so that is not vegan, so we also do one. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, halva, it's like a, it's kind of a dessert. Sweet uh, paste, yeah, kind of sweet. Yeah, yeah it's uh, it's different from uh, in Middle East there is halva uh -huh. from uh, is is uh, it sesame. Like, is it sesame. Uh, 
three, it's like a... And it's... Uh, you know the other, like a semolina porridge? Semolina. Oh, yeah, yeah. Semolina. Having a cigarette break, the cookies have a cigarette break. <laughs> going yeah. go yeah. to the toilet. Yeah, so things kind of things are not so much ever seen things. Yeah. 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 So um all these rules do they apply to like religious Hindu Bengali cooking or uh, do the other groups there, Muslims and Buddhists, do they follow the same rules? Do you know? Uh, well, frankly speaking, it's hard for me to know because uh, all yeah. my teachers, they are followers of this Vaishnavism yeah. or Hindu, so... Yeah. Well, I know that the culture is uh, very much very much mixed there, like uh, also the... Well, there are many uh, Muslims in the Bengal also, and, uh, well, they are not usually vegetarians, but still the cooking culture is uh, 
Facebook or wherever we yes, will put yes, this. So, okay, we good. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Not so common, but uh, I actually do every now and then that I also put fresh ginger in the beginning. Oh, okay. Since it's kind of uh, kind of heavy. It's good for your body. It keeps wind out of your body, doesn't it? Yeah, that yeah. is one thing, and because it's kind of heavy preparation. It should be really sweet. I can take a white sugar whenever I can. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, treatment of the of cows nowadays it is not so good yeah. so so it's very much understandable that uh, uh, people avoid dairy because of that but uh, then uh, our logic is that um, when you are sanctifying the food these uh, cows are anyway getting benefit from from the point that uh, their milk is used for cooling the blood that is one thing or one viewpoint there and, uh, but, uh, well, of course, then another one is the question of also only this uh, cooking in, uh, in my country. We are usually getting milk directly from the farm, yeah. which is uh, without any kind of... Uh, and you, like cows, now they've been... Experiment, but uh, we often put cream to halva, so I just want to try that how it goes with the <laughs> coconut cream, just a little bit. But yeah. 